Okay, let's do parameters for a transformer. This will be interesting. The schematic. First, let's draw a transformer as we did before. Bang. Bang. And set up a coupling coefficient K1. Space 0.9975. Okay, there you are. We have a transformer. Now the problem is the inductance for the transformer is changes depending on how many turns we have in the transformer. And with this model, we would like to experiment with the number of turns. And it would be nice if that was just a number we enter somewhere. So for that, we have to introduce you to basic parameters in LT Spice. So that's, we create an op, and the op we're going to use is dot param. Okay, and that defines a parameter. And we'll start with the number of turns, say the number of primary turns, NP. We'll define a parameter in NP, and we'll just set it to 7. And then if we want, we can add a semicolon for a comment and say uh, primary turns. That comment thing is optional. OK, and then we stick it somewhere on our drawing. OK, and then we're going to do the same thing for the uh, dot param ns equals uh, 14 and semicolon uh, secondary turns. Okay. Be nice if that's all we had to do. Now somehow we have to create an equation that converts these num these two parameters into an inductance and get that inductance plugged in here all automatically. So to do that, we need to create a parameter that calculates the inductance. Dot param, okay, uh, we'll call it uh, LP, inductance for the primary, dot param, I mean, param LP equals. Now, what is the formula for inductance based on the number of terms? Well, it's AL times N squared, and that gives you the inductance in nanohenries. At least for ferrite cores, the AL value will work out that way. Um, for iron powder, it's they use a different scale, and you have to use a slightly different formula. But the idea is the same. So if we take AL, multiply it by the square of the number of turns, we get micro or nano Henry's. So we need to multiply that by 10 to the minus ninth to get Henry's. So the formula is AL. Oops, we haven't defined AL yet. Well, let's do that first. Dot param AL equals 10,000, which happens to be correct for a BN73-302 based on the values that I was given of 10 microhenries for one turn. OK. And this is going to be nano. That they say it's nanohenries per turn. I don't really believe that. That's a comment, by the way. It doesn't need to be there. Just a reminder. Okay. Now we can create the parameter for for L. Dot param L P equals uh, A L times. Uh, how do we write N P squared? Well, I like to put parentheses. You don't necessarily have to for this, but N P and the expression comes from Fortran. Star star 2, the way it used to be in Fortran. Star star is exponentiation. And that gives us ALN squared. And then we had to multiply it by 1e e minus 9, which is 10 to the minus 9th. OK, and that will be Henry's as a comment. OK. You know, when you're parameterizing an inductance, you always have to put it in an 
get in Henry's. So um, whatever you calculate, you need to make sure that it turns out turns out Henry's for inductance or farads for capacitors. Okay, and now we're going to do the secondary. Dot ls dot dot ls dot param ls equals al times um, n s squared star star two um, times one e minus nine and we'll add and raise there. Okay, so that's it. Um, we've defined, we now have the inductance for the primary and the secondary. And all we have to do is change this value up here and, and, and the, these will change. Now, how do we get them in here? Um, the way you get them in here is when you specify the inductance, you use a brace, open brace, and type LP, close brace. The brace pair tells the uh, LT spice that you're using a parameter. So it, it will look for a parameter called LP and will use its value for the inductance in Henry, since it says there H. Okay, and let's move that text somewhere like over here. And then let's do the same thing for this one. Brace LS, brace. Okay. And move that text. Okay. Now, all right, I'm going to show you something I haven't done before. Place the cursor somewhere in the drawing and spin the mouse wheel. You spin it up, it zooms out. If you spin it down, it zooms in. And if you zoom over here, it zooms that way, it moves everything to the left if you Zoom it back out and zoom over here. It moves everything to the right or up and down, same sort of thing. So if you don't want the thing to creep across the page on you, get in the middle of it to zoom it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back a little bit. Then I'm going to create a voltage to drive this. And I'm going to add a load over here. And I'm going to hook that up. Let's say we don't like that text there. Let's move it out of the way a little bit. Grab the uh, um, mover tool and hold down the left mouse button and drag a box around it and let go and then move the text up somewhere else. Okay, and then we can go back to wiring. Click, down, click, 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 grab a couple of grounds, click, click, and hook those up. Okay, and then give uh, the load resistor a value 50 and let's set this up to be a sine wave again. Sine amplitude 1, uh, frequency 10,000. Okay, and move that text somewhere useful. Okay, and then with that, uh, we need to give it some series resistance. Let's make it 50 ohms like we did before. Okay, now we have a parameterized transformer. And um, notice that we could parameterize anything. Any of these values can be parameterized. So, um, and parameters can be used inside of other parameters like I did here. Okay, so let's see what happens. We got to create a transient simulation for five milliseconds. And it runs. We look at the output. 
and we look at the input and we see the same four to one ratio we had before. Um, which is what we expect. This should be about 200 millivolts, and it is. Seems to be slightly smaller. Not sure why that would be. Oh, probably because I used a different number of turns. So my inductances are totally different. I don't really know what they are, um, but uh, they are computed. Now let's change the number of turns on the secondary. Right click on that NS, and we can either edit it here or cancel that and just edit the statement directly. Let's make it seven turns so it's a one-to-one -one transformer. And then run it again. Now you can see the input and output are basically one-to-one. -one. Okay. Um, there is a little bit of loss. Remember this transformer is not ideal so it's got leakage and so there's some leakage inductance causing the difference between the input and output. If I change the coupling coefficient to 1, I bet that goes away. Make it a perfect couple. And yeah, I'd say no. So it must be something else. Um, not sure what it is. Transformer model is actually complete, includes the uh, effects of primary inductance, uh, leakage inductance, and uh, loss. Um, and uh, you can mess with the parameters in the inductors for series or parallel, parallel resistance for loss, or even capacitance, and uh, that sort of thing. So that's the basics for a transformer. Parameterized transformer. Have fun.